Hello and welcome to this tutorial about using Google Poly with a Unity scene. Uh, in a previous tutorial called the Unity Introduction and Terrain Tool that I created uh, here in 2019, I created this simple terrain area with a FPS controller. You can watch that if you'd like to learn how to do that. Otherwise, it's not important that you have an, a, a virtual world like I do here. Um, just have a Unity project open that's 3D and uh, everything else you should be able to follow along with. So. The first thing you need to do when using Google uh, Poly Toolkit is actually go to the Asset Store. So um, if you're not logged in, log in and then search for Poly Toolkit. This is made by Google and published to the Unity Asset Store. I'm going to go ahead and download this. And it's going to go ahead and um, importing in, uh, I believe, a couple folders that will be down here in your assets. and. If you twirl this close, you can see, actually it's just one folder, Poly Toolkit. I think it will auto-generate some others here, but you want to hit Import. I like to twirl the Import Options close to see, or Import Files close to see how, much, how many folders it's going to be adding. That way if I ever have to delete it, I know which ones to get rid of. Okay, so after it gets done um, importing the package, it actually won't work right away. And it's because Poly is a website, okay? so. The problem is that the files that you're putting into Unity need to access that website, and that's a security hole. And you can actually, you know, probably make, you know, malware that you would put into Unity if you don't know what you're, you know, putting into Unity. But we know that Google made this, and we want to access Poly Toolkit, so we have to enable a, 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 a what's called unsafe scripts uh, function. So as soon as this is done, we need to actually go to File build settings. So I'm going to let this finish. All right, so it was imported and like I said, it doesn't work right away. And in fact, it's got an error. If I go to the console here and scroll down, there's an error at the bottom saying unsafe code may appear if compiling with unsafe enable allow unsafe code in the player settings to fix this error. File build settings. And you want to click this player settings button. And then on the right side in the inspector, open up other settings and then scroll through this list. It's kind of hard to parse if you're just looking through it for the first time, but probably about, oh, almost two thirds of the way down here, there's uh, allow unsafe code. As soon as you check that, Google Poly will go ahead and sort of compile. There's a little status indicator at the bottom right here. And when I say compile, I mean run in editor, run in the Unity editor itself. So it popped up these two tabs. Right here, this first one is just a welcome screen and showing us the version and all that and saying have fun, close, thank you. And then we have the actual Poly Toolkit um, window docked right here. So I'm actually gonna drag this kind of up, yeah, like on maybe the, actually let's do the right side of our screen so our scene view here can be in the center. So I'm gonna click scene view. We don't need the asset store anymore. And then the Poly Toolkit is, is right here. So. Um, it's saying sign in here at the top, and uh, let's let's go ahead and open up a browser real quick. So I'm going to open up Firefox, and I'm going to go to, uh, I'm just going to search for Poly Google. I think it's poly.google.com, but I'll just search for Poly Google, and then go to Google Poly. And then up in this top right, I'm going to sign in to a different account here. So I'm actually going to say... Uh, add account or for you I think you might have to hit sign in and then it should look like this for you so I'm gonna choose my IU username and I'm gonna say cfriend at iu.edu for you it might be IU or IUPUI that's fine as soon as you hit next Google's smart enough to know to hook up to IU's central authentication you can log in to Google to get access to the G Suite Oops. Okay, I'm gonna run through Duo here. All right, so now I'm logged in here on this website. And the reason I wanted you to see this is Google Poly is just a website. So anything you produce, say in uh, another software like uh, tilt brush, which is a VR software to actually paint. So like there are tilt brush uh, things in here, like this was called created in tilt brush. 
And uh, what's really cool is you can actually then, you know, work with VR um, creation packages, which I have a tutorial series all about how to do this and hook Tilt Brush up to Google Poly and then, you know, create stuff like this and then bring it into Unity. And that's kind of the reason I'm making this tutorial is how to bring this something like this into Unity. Um, Google Blocks is another one. Um, that's a VR application to build virtual environments, or I'm sorry, uh, virtual objects. Anyway, I don't want to belabor this, but there are a tutorial series uh, I'll put in the description of this video that can help you get started doing that stuff. So the reason I wanted to log in here on Poly is because let's say I wanted to put some objects here in my forest, um, in my scene, and I wanted to put that stuff in there. Let's let's maybe save a couple things. Like I kind of like this uh, the look of this car here. So I'm going to go ahead and check. I'm going to go to it and say, is it downloadable? So yeah, I'm not going to download it. I'm just going to like it. Okay. And then let's go back. And I'm going to search for some other things like uh, maybe I want a, uh, oh, I don't know. Let's see, uh, like some animals and like that. There we go. Put a dog or a sloth, a ground sloth. Sounds good. So, oh, one of the things I forgot to mention was I searched for animals, and I, you probably should hit filter here because not everything on Poly is something that you can use. Um, people need to make sure that it's remixable for, to allow you to add it to your project and use it. Keep in mind, if you do publish content that's remixable from Poly, you do technically need to give credit to the author. Uh, I'm going to use, or I'm going to go to the ground sloth again. I'm going to like it go back this otter this river otter I'm gonna like it as well okay and uh, that's probably good this beetle looks pretty cool too anyway so the reason I had you do that is because now you can sign into poly here in your poly toolkit so I'll click sign in it's gonna bring up a browser and say login so for me I have all these accounts on here it's letting me choose which one I want to use just choosing see friend uh, but you may actually have to log in and just hey allow okay and it'll say like successfully logged in and then you're good and then as soon as it's successful you can go back to it uh, back to your unity editor and you'll see that you're logged in you'll probably have a, a letter for your, the first letter of your name in your account you can click on uh, this drop down and go to your likes Okay, and then there's the river otter, there's the ground sloth, there's the stuff I liked on the website. So you kind of can add this to your workflow. It's like, okay, I'm going to work on a project today where I need, you know, uh, maybe a laundry list of different types of items because you just need to visualize something in, you know, augmented reality, virtual reality, so on and so forth. So I'm going to take this river otter and click on it and say import into project. Okay, and then I'll go back. And the ground sloth, I'll do the same thing. Go back, and then this uh, this car here, I'll also import it into project. Go back, and then that's good. But I kind of want a tilt brush thing in there, so let's do some searching here in the editor. So like, let's. Uh, well, actually, let me show you one thing else. Well, you can search here, so let's just say like tilt brush know what else to search on. <laughs> um, I don't know. Let's say I want this sculpture here. I'm going to click on that and import it into my project. Okay. And then what I wanted to show you also with search is if you go on the website, let's say, so I'm going to go back to Poly. And let's say you find something that you like or somebody emailed you something that that you like um, say this uh, this lionfish here oh it's not remixable you have to find something that's remixable so let's just uh, let's say like a car well I don't want to do a car let's do a, let's search for tilt brush items and let's just click on one of these that's uh, remixable. So, oh, that's kind of cool. This backpack Wolfman. And it's not remixable. 
Darn it. How about this uh, New Year's Daffodil? Not remixable. Shoot. Flower. That's a good idea. Uh, flowers. And then I'm going to click on the filter and choose remixable. All right. Sorry, this is taking so long here. Uh, let's just choose this one here. And instead of me liking it, let's say I got the URL from it. So you copy the URL. That also works in uh, in here. So you can just paste the URL URL in by hitting uh, Control V or Command V. Search. There it is. Import into project. Okay, good. Now I'm going to go back to project. Um, by the way, a console you can hit clear if a bunch of errors and stuff popped up from imports. You kind of ignore those if you hit clear and they don't go, they don't stay. Go to project and now under your assets folder there should be a folder just called poly. So as soon as you open that, there'll be an assets uh, folder in there, and they've actually created for you some prefabs. These little blue squares are prefabs. If you uh, let me drag this over to the right, if you uh, scale these up with the little scaler down here, you can actually see sort of a preview of what they are. So here's that flower I imported. I'll just drag that in. It should be in front of the user if I hit F. Yeah, that works. Uh, again, something that you need to sort of scale up in the in the virtual world. So that's kind of neat. So if I hit play, we can see that. There it is. So we just went from Google Poly into Unity and I'll go ahead and put this otter in. Now this is something you'll face is the people that model these, they don't know the scale that you're working in and then inside of their project they might just choose to make things bigger for their own projects. So you might have to rescale things and figure out how to uh, how to match it to your virtual world. So I mean it's not too bad here. The, the scaling um, was pretty close. Sometimes you'll bring stuff in and they're just they're just massive. Now the sloth is uh, I mean they're I think I said ground sloth. Ground sloths are pretty big, so I guess I'll just make it real big. In VR, it's kind of neat to see big creatures because uh, they actually look sort of impressive uh, in VR. Anyway, and then that car that I brought in that should come in fine. And then this is the last thing I really want to show you with this is if you bring in an object like this car that has assets on it that you don't necessarily want, like this car has this base, I don't need this base. So inside of the prefab, you can twirl it open and sort of click through and see what it is made of. Now unfortunately, this one is made up of assets that are kind of attached to one another. So like that's not really going to work for me because if I was to so like this is the base, if I were were to delete this, it'll you know it'll say like are you sure because it's a prefab, open the prefab. I'm going to delete this base here. Yeah, and see that base was part of the car itself. So this asset probably is not going to work for my purposes unless I take it in to like Google Blocks and remix it and actually remove the base. So Unity is not going to be able to help us with cleaning up this file. As you see the, the, the objects are all connected. So that's too bad and um, that's just you know what you have to deal with. So I'm going to click to go back and now we have this sort of jalopy car that's unusable for what I wanted it for. And then this art sculpture was created in Tilt Brush. I just wanted to show you something with this is if it has animated brushes, it should work. Oh, it's very small. Let me make that bigger. There we go. I'm going to hit play and let's see if these brushes animate because as it sits, nothing's animated and it shouldn't be necessarily. But uh, Tilt Brush has sort of uh, animatable brushes. So there's nothing animated on this one. So let's hop on here to Poly Toolkit again and search for, I don't know, fire. Okay. So I'm sure this is animated here. So I'm going to import that into my project. There it is there. I'm going to go ahead and delete this sculpture and put the fire there. Sort of an odd looking fire, but I'm going to make it smaller. There you go. And 
there's probably better fires out there for what I'm trying to do here, like a campfire. And it's not animated as it sits, but as soon as you go into play mode, it should be animated. If you're using an FPS controller or some sort of main camera, yeah. So the reason it's animated here is because at runtime, um, the tilt brush brushes actually do sort of link up and become animated. So pretty cool uh, that you could do this so quickly and there's no conversion of files. This is sort of a leap forward for Unity developers to be able to use uh, Google Poly and, and also build these, like this was probably built in a VR headset and now I've got it in my project. Uh, pretty cool. Thanks for watching this tutorial. If you need help um, with this or if you have any other questions about VR and AR and Unity, uh, you can contact the AVL at vizhelp at iu.edu. Thank you.